if you are as fortunate as I am to have really good friends, then you know that they are just a, a, an amazing part of life, something that you can't do without. And yet at times there's something that brings you frustration as well as, as, uh, as joy and pain and everything in between. But my goodness, oh, how different would life be if we didn't have these friendships and these relationships in our life? So uh, today we want to talk a little bit about what it means and to communicate in friendships and what are friendships and how can we do that more effectively and really, um, place the emphasis on these critical relationships that we have with our friends uh, around us. So first of all, let's talk about some of the characteristics of, of friendships, or in other words, what does it mean to be a good friend, right? So as we know, there are different types of friendships. If you, if you're a fan of the show friends, you know that there are different types of friendships, right? There are, you know, really, really close relationships. There are more that there are some that are more just acquaintances Some people, you know, maybe socially, but don't necessarily hang out with that closely. So, I mean, there are different types of friendships, and uh, and so and and then there there are variations b b that come into play when we talk about gender and things that we're going to touch on here. But but there are different types of friendships. Not every friendship is the same. Not every friendship is, exists at the same level. You know, um, not everybody is a is a is a Chandler and Joey. Right. Those those two are really really tight. Um, sometimes you have a, a a Chandler and Phoebe who were you know seldom in scenes together. Right. I mean, in terms of just the two of them, they weren't like the close friends, but but they were acquaintances and they they had some hijinks together. But um, so you have different types of friendships though, and friendships that exist in different in in different circumstances. And so just keep that in mind. Uh, we also need to remember that um, there are friendships that will vary in terms of uh, how they're how they're made up, um, just in general, but also in terms of gender and communication, and and uh, and uh, so friendships in, uh, will be affected by gender, though, and and communication will vary from uh, situation to situation. So when you have same sex friends, um, you'll have you know. So we're talking here about uh, you know men who are friends with other men, women who are friends with other women. Um, when you have those types of things, the rules are slightly different, for example, than when you have opposite sex friends, when you have a man and woman who are friends. Um, uh, and so the, the, the rules are different in terms of touch, in terms of language, in terms of all these little things that we do differently, frankly, when we are with a friend who is of the same sex as us, as opposed to a friend who's of the opposite sex of us. Those are different. And then there are different rules, of course, that exist too when you have something like friends with benefits or whatever you want to call it. Um, so uh, the, the, the rules are different. The expectations are different. The, you know, what's allowed and not allowed and things like that are different in all of these different circumstances. So we need to, to, to keep that in mind as well and consider that in, in how we approach these friendships and how we communicate in the different friendships. I also need to bear in mind that friendships are affected by social media very much so anymore, right? So you wouldn't just go on social media. Hopefully you wouldn't go on media, social media and just start blasting your friend um, for some, you know, some secret they told you or something and just start throwing it all over social media or just, you know, uh, shooting fire at your friend on social media just because you were a little upset with them. Those things can be damaging and permanent. Um, and then you also, I mean, you have the idea of who do you, who are you friends with on social media? Are you expected to be friends with somebody that you just met? And if they send you a friend request, is there that pressure? And then what rules come along with that? What does that indicate when you are friends with somebody on social media? Are you follow somebody on social media? Uh, are you, are you, you know, implying that you tacitly approve of what they are doing or who they are and things like that? So, um, friendship is also affected by social media in very practical ways. And then also just kind of more uh, fringe ways, but, but it's affected by social media a great deal anymore in particular. And friendships are governed by rules. There are rules. For example, you know, when I was growing up, there was a rule. You didn't date your friend's ex. If your friend had dated somebody, you're not allowed to date that person unless you get permission from, from your friend, then it's okay. But, but there are rules like that. There are rules about, you know, you don't, you don't talk about your friend behind their back. You don't share their secrets without their consent. You know, that, that's their information, their secret. There, there are rules that govern these friendships. You got to have your friends back and so forth. So, um, so we know that whether they are, are spoken or unspoken, whether they are formal or informal rules, that just like any other relationship, friendships have different rules that govern them. 
Another thing to consider about friendships is that they, they each have a particular lifespan. Um, and so uh, not, uh, not every friendship is going to go the distance. And, uh, and sometimes they'll, you know, sometimes that breakup will be formal and sometimes it will be less formal and just kind of happen through attrition. But there's some, you know, friendships have a lifespan to a certain extent. So sometimes you have, uh, so, uh, and, and not just life, but they have a, they, they have a uh, kind of arc to them in the way that they develop, right? And the, and the way that they grow. So um, you have, first of all, what we call uh, role limited interaction, right? Meaning you may be you, acquaintances with this person, you may be friendly with this person, but, uh, but only in certain circumstances. You may have somebody that you're friends with at work, but you don't hang out with them outside of work, right? Or you hang out with them when you're with this third person. Right. I mentioned before, you know, you didn't see a lot of Chandler Phoebe uh, engagement in the in just friends. Right. In in the show Friends with just the two of them. Uh, you saw lots of them together with other people. So but they were kind of role limited in their interactions. They were for the most part, they were they were friends via other friends. Right. So their 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 interaction was limited more to their role as this other person's friend. Then uh, you may move into what we call friendly relations, where you start to kind of, you know, break off a little bit from the group and you do start to get to know this person as an individual a little bit more and, and, and maybe start to make some plans with them or something. Then that may lead to moving toward friendship. Right. Uh, where you're, you're, you may be hanging out outside of that group. You're maybe making plans and, and being intentional about spending time together and getting to know each other a little bit. You're moving toward that, that type of uh, a stronger friendship. Then slowly as we go and note that some friendships or some relationships don't ever get beyond a certain point of this. Maybe you get into the friendly, rela friendly relations and realize this person's not really for me. <laughs> this isn't really working for me. So you kind of put the brakes on and you, you halt things there and don't go any further. But if things continue, then you would move toward friendship. And theoretically, eventually, then you would enter into what we call nascent friendship, which is kind of the beginning stages of a friendship. Um, it's not that different from when you have the beginning stages of when you're first seeing someone, you're first dating someone, uh, and it's kind of new and it's exciting. And you probably spend a lot of time together in that nascent friendship um, period. There's probably you know, you're spending quite a bit more time together than you might otherwise. Um, and, and again, it's not that different than what we see in people who, who have started dating recently. Um, you have that same kind of experience when we, when we make friends, eventually you'll enter into what's called a stabilized friendship where you're seeing, you may not see each other quite as much as you were at the very beginning, um, but it's more comfortable when you do get together, you just pick up kind of where you left off and it's like no time has passed at all, regardless of how much time actually has passed. It's just, you jump right in and you fall into the same kind of patterns and, and, uh, the same kind of expectations. And you have that just stabilized friendship where, um, you don't have to worry about impressing that person all the time. They've seen your good days, your bad days, and they're still around. And again, this is, this is more like a long-term relationship. If we're thinking of it in like a dating aspect, an nascent friendship would be like kind of the beginning, the honeymoon period, the of, of the dating period. Stabilized friendship is going to be that longer term relationship where you're more comfortable with each other, right? You've, you know, so you've, um, you've been around each other long enough to know one another and, and have some stability there and, and, uh, and, and know that that person is your friend for the long term, really. Then eventually, though, it's possible that we may get into what we call the waning friendship. If that friendship is winding down, either because there's been some sort of, um, uh, some sort of event that's led to, to maybe the potential termination of that relationship, or maybe just your life circumstances have changed. There are all kinds of reasons um, that, that relationships end, that, that, and, and particularly friendships. It's possible that one person moved away, or that one person got married, or one person had kids, and uh, these types of things uh, can compete for our time, and they do cut into friendships. So it's possible that, that not all relationships will make it through that or make it past that, uh, and certainly not necessarily in the same shape that they that they had before they may look different and uh, and and feel different but uh, so that it's possible that there may become a waning friendship when that kind of fades out over time and fades away so in addition to having the lifespan though we know that friendships differ at, at different parts of our own lives Right? Because we have different needs at different stages of our lives, so our friendships will change. So, for example, when we first uh, when we first become aware of friendships and start to have friendships, that would be in our childhood, right? And our childhood friends are going to be, first of all, dictated largely by proximity. 
as much as anything. We're, we're going to be friends. We don't have the ability as, tri as children to travel that far. So we're going to be friends with people who are in our neighborhood. We're going to be friends with our siblings, um, possibly our parents, depending on the situation. We're going to be friends with people where we go to school, with people where we go to school that we see on a regular basis, or we go to, when we go to church, or we go to different, uh, you know, events. So if you're involved in 4-H or some sports or different things like that, our childhood friends are going to be friends of uh, convenience as much as anything convenience in the sense that they are around and available um, and maybe have some similar interests broadly to us uh, maybe like to play the same sports or uh, play with the same toys in general but uh, but we're not going to be too picky because again we have a limited pool to draw from so we're going to be pretty open a lot of times to whatever friends come around and we're going to take advantage of that in childhood as we get a little older we get into adolescence we're going to be you know when we become, become teenagers early teenagers and teenagers we're going to be much more concerned with being friends with people who are our own age we're going to focus on that again proximity is going to be an issue so we're going to be mostly friends with people who are nearby and people that we go to school with but we're going to really hone into people who are our age that's going to become very important to us um, and, and to, to be friends with people who are at least our age if not older and, and stick to that um, pretty closely uh, because we, we just share, we feel like nobody else understands. We feel like nobody else can relate to what we're experiencing. We don't understand that our parents have already been through that. Maybe not in the exact same sense, but, but our parents have been through a lot of this and our siblings have been through a lot of this. And so um, we're going to focus on friends in adolescence that are very much like us and, and available to us. Then, As young adults, our priorities change again as young adults then as uh, so we're, we're when we're in college and graduating college and so forth again proximity is still an issue in that sense but it's not as much of an issue we're going to start to pursue individual interests much more so we're going to have choices about being involved in you know i don't have to be here except for work maybe i don't have to be anywhere so i'm going to start choosing activities that i'm interested in and that's going to allow me to to really pursue friendships with people who have a, a more in common with me People who have similar interests to me, people who like the same sports team or like to go to trivia night or like to do whatever it is that you like to do. We're going to be able to be have more access to those kinds of groups and activities. So we're going to become friends with people who are who are there and, and probably have the same interests as us. Right. So that makes sense. As young adults, then we have more choices. So we're going to start seeking out people who we think uh, we want to hang out with and, and that, that we try and be the person that they want to hang out with as well. Then when we get into adulthood, you know, things start to change again as we start to here we see things like getting married and having children and those things really have an impact on on your uh, external relationships and, and how you view friendship and how you view the world, period. So in adulthood, we start to things start to um, take on a little different color as well. And then finally, when we're in later adulthood, it's interesting because we almost kind of come back around to our siblings in many ways. Oftentimes we see people um, come full circle and come back around to where their their best friends actually are their siblings or, or their parents if they're living. So they, they uh, again, cultivate and begin relationships um, with with uh, people that had been a part of their lives and will continue to be a part of their lives, like their family members and, and people like that. So whatever stage of friendship you're in and uh, whatever type of friend, whatever part of the lifespan you're in and uh, whatever you're looking for, I just I just hope you're able to now a little more fully appreciate um, the, the different aspects of friendship and uh, understand where your friends may be coming from and, and what you expect of them and what they expect of you as we move forward. If you have questions about this, about friendship, about uh, any type of interpersonal relationship, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you uh, there. In the meantime, I hope that you will give greater consideration to your friendships and have more appreciation for your friendships and, uh, and uh, the role that communication plays in forming and maintaining those bonds.